Welcome to this edition of Fast Forward Radio, where we talk to leading experts on design thinking, innovation, and strategy. And I'm very honored to have a very special guest today, Cindy Prager with Rhythm Systems. Welcome to today's show, Cindy. Thanks for having me, Clay. Hey, I know we've been planning this for a very long time. In fact, we've been planning this podcast for, you know, really the last few months. And the original topic we had was, was around the intersection of high performance, creativity, and innovation. But given everything that's going on, it, it felt like we needed to shift to really focus on how, how can teams, organizations, innovate through the crisis and really think about what their organizations, they want them to look like after the crisis. So maybe just to start off, give you an opportunity to introduce yourself to our audience and tell us more about Rhythm Systems and what Rhythm Systems does for clients. Yeah, sure. Um, so hello, everybody. I'm Cindy Prager, uh, co-founder of Rhythm Systems, uh, serial entrepreneur. This is my fourth company. Um, and so Rhythm Systems helps mid-market growth firms to develop their um, growth strategies and using our software to execute them so they can get everyone in the organization aligned and focused and using our dashboards in their weekly meetings. Yes, really, what you guys do is very cool in the sense that we, we like it so much that we're a client. <laughs> um, and so I guess that's the, the biggest endorsement you can give. Uh, and what we found is just working with Rhythm has helped us help Digital Fast Forward create a strategy for the next five to 10 years and get, start getting us in a position for growth and the reason I, I really wanted to have you on, Cindy, is to, mm -hmm. is to help our audience understand, you know, one, how should they be thinking about this current crisis and what they can do in the near term to start moving in, in a good direction, right? And I love why, where I, what you describe as what Rhythm does really resonates with me is, you know, small to mid-market companies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, companies that are trying to grow. And right now, those are the companies that really need the extra mm -hmm. feedback, support, and, and encouragement. So I uh, would love to hear, how are you sharing and connecting and, and guiding the companies that you are working with? Yeah, so I, I think that it's really important to seek to understand where different companies are at. Um, there's really three categories that um, I had thought about uh, as to being able to talk to someone and be very helpful to them. Um, and as we think through this crisis at Rhythm Systems and we help our customers, the three categories I think about is survive, recover, and thrive. And so depending where you are is really depending on you know, what you need to be doing through the crisis. So I'm happy to go through all three. Or Clay, you tell me what is most valuable. If we want to walk through different scenarios uh, for your audience, happy to do that. Yeah, and I think some of this is, is through my own lens, right? <laughs> uh, and things that I'm very interested in. And also thinking about our, our broader audience, because we're working with different leaders, different companies. Mm -hmm and helping them try to drive innovation. But we're, we're definitely seeing this uh, split right now where mm -hmm. there's some companies that are based go into hibernation. Mm -hmm. And if this all blows over or when it blows over, we'll come out. Then we also have some, some companies we, we're seeing where they're saying, no, now's the time to accelerate. I mean, I was just on a call yesterday with an executive CIO uh, that said, you know, we can't take our foot off the gas right now. We have too much mm -hmm. going on. And I'm curious, you know, with the survive, recover, and thrive, mm -hmm. it sounds like, you know, you, you're giving guidance mm -hmm. and helping companies think through, like, what mode they want to be in. So I'd love to hear more about those three different categories and how you're seeing uh, firms 
operate in those three different ways. Yeah. So, um, you know, let me talk about those two different categories. Um, there are most of our companies are in that category where they they had a very, very robust business. Their mar- product market fit was very strong. Um, their products were necessary or needed. They had high value, et cetera. So a lot of them have a lot of clients. Um, therefore, they had some money in the bank and they, they have some you know, receivables, et cetera. That is who we're dealing with. Um, there are one or two clients that we had that are in the retail environment, um, you know, whether they were in food service or the restaurant or they were in, you know, brewery or something where just, I mean, the, the market situation just decimated them. Um, they're in a very, very, very different situation um, because they literally went from sales that happens every day as people are coming through their door to zero, and yet they have expenses, rent expenses and other expenses. Um, so uh, that scenario is very, very, very difficult. Um, and for them, uh, they had to make immediate cuts and they are just trying to reimagine the future because right now there isn't a present. Yeah. So their real focus is on, you know, what do they have? How can they get back? Or if they can't get back to where they were, they did have... Uh, you know, a great brand. They did have great people. They did have great, uh, a great product. It's the retail environment and the, um, what's going on in the marketplace that is causing them not to be able to do well right now. So they're in really thinking mode. Um, and, and, and really depending on their ability to, uh, get through the financial crisis that they're in, they're in thinking mode. The majority, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the majority of patterns that I can share um, are where clients that we have that have you know significant businesses, whether they be ten million, hundred million, you know, we even deal with some of the you know uh, thousand plus people companies for their divisions. Um, mm-hmm. They all have various different stages that they're going through. So I'll start on survive, and um, I think that for everybody, they went through the stage where first and foremost, most important was the safety of their employees. And so in that, you know, we pretty much now are all working at home and need to be working at home for safety um, for our manufacturing firms um, because of social distancing and what they need to do. They're actually, one of the innovative things they've done is they're rotating teams. So they'll have team A go into the manufacturing firm, have social distancing, get their work done. Then the next week, team B comes in. Then team A comes in. Then team B comes in. So that is one of the things that they're doing for uh, in the manufacturing firm. For those that have knowledge employees, they went from you know making sure that people were safe with their social distancing to the next thing, how in the world do I get these people to work remote? Yeah. So before they could even deal with, uh, you know, work processes, they physically had to set up laptops. So uh, most of our companies had seen this coming. They bought hundreds of laptops to be able to support right. people that didn't have them. And they spent a lot of time actually figuring out, oh, if you have this device and this plug and this, you know, it, it, it was yeah. just a variable setting up. But they've gotten through that phase. Yeah, that's really interesting too. Yesterday I was on a call with a a client, a bank that we work with and they were commenting or the lead that we work with over there was commenting. They'd gone through a lot of the contingency planning Uh and trying to think through two, three years ago. And one of the things that came out of that was everybody has a laptop (laughs) instead of having desktops. And so that was one of the pieces that, you know, I think we take for granted. Right. That laptops, everybody has a laptop, but that became a big uh, way that they were able to go remote pretty quickly for a bank. Right. right. So sounds like, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I think like for knowledge employees who have laptops, that gives you a communication vehicle. So then they moved into the next phase. And the next phase is, okay, how are we going to communicate? When are we going to communicate? What is the protocol for communicating? And at the same time, they're trying to keep productivity levels up um, at that point. 
and they had to change workflows and make sure that certain work was able to be done at home. That's really critical. So those, those were two things that, that were really important. And so uh, one of the issues that we saw, and that's very important, is communication cycles. Mm. So now more than ever, you have people that are, are remote. They feel distant. Some of them feel very isolated. It's challenging and frustrating. Some have kids at home, et cetera. And so clarity is really, really important. Getting aligned, being very clear, over communicating for our clients has been a mantra. Um, you know, I think without hearing from your leaders and news, the stories are going to be the worst for the employees. They're reading outside news. They're reading things. It's scary. It's frightening. It, you know, waters that have not been navigated. So for our, um, for our clients, all of them have been on daily huddles. Mm. So they've taken various teams, um, whether it's exec teams, whether it's a town hall with all of the company and the CEO or leaders are speaking, whether it's departmental teams, they are on a regular basis of knowing when they're going to have communications and uh, those communications could be very different. Some are reporting about what's going on in the company from the leadership and some are huddles where you're gaining learning very quickly. So you talk about innovation, for example, for at Rhythm Systems, because we have clients all over the world and we're dealing with their strategy and their execution and we have to make changes every day on our daily huddle. Uh, we change the messages are how are you doing? So we know how the employees are doing, good, bad, or whatever. Second is what are you learning yeah. from client? You know, what are you learning? What are you hearing? What are the client? You know, what's happening? You know, from the clients. And the third is are you stuck? Nice. So what are you what are you doing? What are you learning? And where are you stuck? So That's right. Really using those daily, daily huddles to stay connected mm-hmm. where you may normally have a water cooler type That's environment right. at the office to have those conversations. But now it's going to be important to at least have a framework to keep people, the team connected and communicating. Right. And it's extremely important that the leadership sets up those rhythms. Um, yeah. So that, that keeps your com- communication uh pretty clean. So that, that was, that was the next phase in communication at the manufacturing firms, they're doing, um, standups. So, um, in the morning, um, if they have team a or team B, whoever's coming in, uh, whoever that the shift manager, they're doing a standup in the morning and they're doing one at night. And so that's how they're, they're communicating to them. That's fascinating. I know for, and I can speak for digital fast forward. One of the things that we, we've normally had, thanks to rhythm is daily standups. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. We do, do our daily stand up. Everybody communicates kind of mm-hmm. what they're working on. We go through the, the different pieces, you know, mm-hmm. uh, how are you doing? What are you learning? Where are you stuck? Mm-hmm. Uh, any mm-hmm. blocks? One of the things we started doing also is a daily end of day morale boost. Mm. Uh, and so, and that's what I'd love to hear your thoughts on. You know, how do you, how do you keep, there's one thing, you know, that you need to keep the business going and kind of making sure it's operational, but then there's this other piece, right? That, that has an impact on strategy. It's really, how are the, how are the people doing? How's Mariah? It's like you were saying, people get sucked into these, uh, you know, black holes with watching the news or reading articles and you can feel the energy, right? You can feel the energy of team members where they have been watching a lot of news because they pretty much don't say anything on the meeting. Uh, But I'm curious, like your thoughts on how do you keep the team sane and and healthy uh, in terms of just themselves and and really staying connected to the, the work that they're doing? Right. Yeah, I, I, th- I think there's two different things. I mean, I, 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 I'll talk about the work in a second. I think one of the things that people have to realize is it's kind of hard to work if you're not mentally healthy. Yeah. And uh, so, like I said, being isolated is ca- can cause a lot of problems. So getting on top of that, um, there's, a cu- there's a couple of things I've seen. One, again, making sure that you have regular times when you are having 
uh, talking to people and they know that they're going to speak with people. Two is, I think it's really important, a lot of our executives, they're doing one-on-ones. So your leadership's doing one-on-ones. Again, asking you privately, how are you doing? Right? Maybe they don't want to say that in a, a public forum. How are you doing? You know, what, what, are you, what are you working on? How can I help? And I think asking how I can help is, is really important. The other thing that we do, our clients all have weekly meetings where they're using dashboards. And one of their most important dashboards is employee health index. Uh-huh. So prior to the weekly meeting, before the combined dashboards get updated, there's something called employee health index. And it, you know, green means I'm doing fine. Yellow means I'm full, but I'm okay. You can't give me more projects. Red means I'm drowning, which yeah. at some point somebody's got to help take something off. And super green means, you know, I'm getting it done. And if somebody needs help, I have ability to get help. So it's kind of balancing that. Like, I, I love what you said around, uh, you know, if, if it's hard to do the work or do work or even be present at work if you're not well emotionally, right? And so that employee health index is, is also a potential way to kind of gauge overall, how's the team doing, right? And maybe even right. asking, you know, like, hey, just even when you're doing the employee uh, health index or checking in there, you know, mm-hmm. if, if you need to, if there's something going on and you need to take time, you know, just let us know. I know my wife's company that's one of the things that that they've been talking about is, you know, normally there's a, a there might be a two week mandatory requirement to put in leave and get your leave approved two week, at least two weeks in advance. And what sounds like one of the things they're starting to go to is, is actually say, well, even if you need to put it in like this week, let's say it's Monday and you feel like you need to take Friday, mm-hmm. go ahead and put it in, right? Just give a heads up. But it's like, I think they're seeing where it's so critical to be able to be flexible, more flexible, just Mm -hmm. to keep the morale uh, in a good place. I don't know if you've seen any of those sort of patterns coming up. Oh, absolutely. I think that, you know, one is checking in personally one-on-one. The second is inserting fun. And so, you know, there was, quote, scheduled fun before. I mean, people went and they met with friends. They went out to dinner. They played tennis. They did, you know, lots of things that, you know, where they socialized. And now for, you know, most of the United States, you know, here in North Carolina, we're shelter at home. You can't do those things. And so I think, like, for me as a leader, I asked someone who I know is very social in our company, hey, can you create, we do, you know, he did a lunch, you know, lunches. He did, we have 315 coffee break for 15 minutes and anybody who wants to can join. He scheduled a happy hour this, you know, at night with the employees. So, you know, for those who, you know, want to participate and are very social and kind of rely on, you know, work to help them, or maybe they're disconnected from their families. um, That's been really helpful We've had other companies, they do song of the day. That's kind yeah. of fun. And somebody gets to pick and it gets sent out to the whole, you know, to the whole firm that, you know, that's really fun. Um, others, like I make sure for my team, I'm like, hey, it's time to cut it off. Get outside. Just go outside, go walk, do something, do anything, but don't, you know, don't do work. And um, so I, I think as leaders, you want to do the best you can to be helpful. Yeah, it's, I, I love the virtual happy hours. I'm finding yeah. uh, uh, my martini skills are getting better. <laughs> so uh, yeah. it's, it's interesting. And, and there's so many different directions we can go in this conversation because mm-hmm. I, I had a really amazing conversation with one of our uh, business partners, like another company that we work with, where you know we were talking through how what's happening is really changing and will have a lasting impact on changing how people work, right? Mm-hmm. If you think about remote teams, you know, like there's so many new things, even for, for us, you know, it looks like I'm in the office, but in truth, I'm, I'm actually, you know, Zoom. So if I show you my real background, hang on, right? That's my real background. But, you know, one of the things that I know my team and I've seen other customers really getting deep okay. into is the yeah. virtual background that makes you feel like you're in an office or even, you know, we have, I think I even have like a, 
you know, if I want to go to Fiji, yeah. right, it's, it's very go. cool. Uh, yeah. But it's, you know, it's this lasting impact already. Like I, another friend of mine posted on LinkedIn uh, about just being at home and, and being able to spend time and not having to travel as much and just realizing like, oh, me and my wife will stay together even though I'm not traveling, you know? <laughs> and, I, and I can relate to that. I'm, I travel a lot and it's just been so amazing yeah. to be able to be home, be with the family, get good sleep, you know, go for walks. And I'm curious, like your thought on the, the lasting, potential lasting impact of this great migration home to stay at home. Like, what do you think this might look like a year from now and how, as a business leader, is something that I need to start thinking about and factoring in. So curious, so your take on that. Yeah, I, I, I really think, as I said, as, as people are navigating the survive, recover, and thrive, you know, while they look at surviving, and we'll finish that up at some point, what, what they're doing for productivity, for cash, for settling in for a longer time period than they might have thought they were gonna be in. Um, simultaneously, we have asked all of our companies who are not in that complete crisis situation as they're thinking about what they're going to do in their survive mode to make sure that they clear their brains and they go to the thrive mode mm -hmm. and reimagine if they want to reimagine their business. One, what is something if, you know, we were having a discussion today with all of our um, software team and consultants and uh, one of the things that they said that they're doing for all of their planning sessions with their clients is they're asking them, hey, um, if you knew what you knew today mm. and you were in annual planning, what would you do differently? Well, that's such a good question. And it's a really, really, really good question, right? And so, you know, our head of consulting is meeting with, you know, one of the top, you know, software companies, funded software companies in the United States, and they're doing their planning. And so she had them ask that question and three others. She said to them, uh, tell me uh, assumptions that you're making right now for what you know um, about the market based on this crisis. Number two, what are new threats that you haven't anticipated? Mm -hmm. And number three, what are new opportunities that might exist in the short term and in the long term. And then she asked that final question, after we gather all this information, knowing what you know, if this had been the situation when you did planning with us in December for 20, you know, 2020, what would it look like? And so we really are forcing that reimagining because if you were reimagine, one, it'll enable you to stop doing some things that are on your annual plan and just accept that it's not gonna happen. Get it out of your sights. It, 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 mentally to have things on that list and just not get it done and move, just make a decision for what you know today. You can always put it back on. Two is, unfortunately, we'll go back to the survive and situation. Cash is very, very, very tight. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of expenses have been cut. And even with that, with sales being slow or the amount of cash that you're burning, you just simply may not be able to afford payroll. And so how do you make these decisions? And one of the most important things is not to make the decision based on the moment, but also make the decision on thinking about, go into the future, think and reimagine where you wanna be, things that you were going to do or might wanna do but never did before. And then imagine if you had a desert island, as Jim Collins said, Who's the team you want to take to battle with you? Yeah, yeah. So we've had you know, many clients who are in retail who have always said, I was starting to move to online. And they hadn't really invested heavily in online. And I was talking to one of the CEOs the other night, and he said, you know what? I'm going to make that investment. And I said, well, who on your team has that skill? Now, while that's a small part of their business today, that person becomes very important in the future. So as you're looking at you know, the impossible task of having to manage 
your payroll and navigate cuts in the payroll, you have to be very, very thoughtful about decisions you make for today and where you're going to be tomorrow. This is so powerful. Like, I think our audience is very fortunate. Like, I feel very fortunate just to be able to have this conversation with you at this time. Uh, because, you know, like I shared at the beginning, we're a rhythm client. And I, if we hadn't started working with, with you, your team, with rhythm and the platform, you know, earlier in the year, I, it, we would be in a very different place right now. And I think it's exactly as you're, you're mm-hmm. saying, you know, we, at the beginning of the year, we made the decision to shift the business to be a mm-hmm. digital business, right? Mm-hmm. We, a lot of our listeners know Digital Fast Forward is an innovation consultancy. So a lot of times, in order to deliver value, mm-hmm. somebody has to get on a plane and go meet with the client, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which is great. You know, my background is consultant. All of our team has backgrounds as consultants. But we also realized last year that's that model doesn't scale well, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so in this next stage of growth, one of the things that we we've been working with your team on is is what does our organization look like as a digital company? Mm-hmm. And essentially, this whole uh, the coronavirus crisis has forced us to accelerate all of that. Mm-hmm. But we had to at least have a base game plan, you know, mm-hmm. to get started. And I, mm-hmm. I also, I love what you were saying about Collins, right? Is uh, one of the books that I'm, I've read at the end of last year uh, is The Infinite Game by Simon. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just changed my whole yeah. mindset in terms of how to think about the business yeah. in the future. Because mm-hmm. I come from, you know, generally I've worked with startups or worked with companies where the whole goal is is exit right even as a a new startup now you know we're three years into this and my whole mindset is just you know for those three years has been let's exit in five years Mm -hmm. right like just whatever i need to do exit in five years and once i read infinite mindset or infinite game it just changed my whole way of thinking to say no what is the impact we have we can have in 10 20, 50 years, what type of company do I want to build? Do we as leaders in this company want to build? Mm -hmm. And what does that look like in 50 years? And that I, you know, it's changed the way that I make decisions because I look at this current crisis and I say, you know what, this is actually an opportunity to accelerate because we know, you know, you listen to people, if you're really paying attention, you listen to people like Bill Gates, right? Mm -hmm. Or people that have been tracking this sort of epidemic or pandemic Mm -hmm. before it all happened. Mm -hmm. And you realize like, yep, this is going to happen. People have already been looking out for it and we're going to get past it. And so the question is, what do you want to look like after that? What, how do I use this time to build a company that looks the way that I want the company to look 10 years from now? Like, Mm -hmm. like, how do I keep moving Mm -hmm. forward? And so I, I love the feedback that you're giving, even from a cash flow standpoint. It's not, I'm going to make a decision because I don't have money in the bank, if, if that's the case. Uh, I'm really looking at it saying, okay, well, what is it I'm trying to build? What is that going to look like later? That might mean I need to change or adapt for the time being, but I still need to keep my eye to you know, the five-year, 10-year you know, or as, as uh, the term that, mm-hmm. you know, you guys have given to us, uh, my BHAG, right? My big, hairy, audacious goal. Mm-hmm. I can't lose sight of that. And I, like, I'm curious if you're seeing where firms or companies you're working with, you know, at the first hint of crisis, they, they lose sight of that BHAG, right? That big, hairy, audacious goal, or do they get closer to it and say, you know, like, I, I need to hold on to this even tighter now. I think you know what we have seen is something very, very human. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, I think it, it's too. It, it, we we only have what three or four weeks of data right now, and um, like I said, there there are phases, just like in anything bad. You know, some horrible thing happens to you in life. You go through phases. You you know you deny, then you go through anger, then you go through you know. Uh, various stages and you come out of it, right? And so I, I think it's the same thing in this situation. Um, I think that some people denied that anything was going to be wrong. 
Um, and then as you get more and more concrete data, you start to make adjustments, right? So some people looked at the data and they said, you know what? It looks like we're going to go remote. We're buying computers now. Some people waited until there was a shelter at home order and, you know, for them, their guess was a little wrong and it was, you know, difficult to get computers. They were sold out. Um, so, but it could have gone right for them. Maybe they didn't spend all of that money and they didn't need to do it. Um, I think that, I think right now what we're seeing at this very moment, which is April, um, it's April, April the 2nd. 2nd, which is April the 2nd, is that people have definitely navigated from, uh, like I said, safety, not as much talk about that anymore. They've done everything possible and continue to be very diligent on that. Um, you know, I think technology, a lot of people, they're on these Zoom calls. I mean, they're, they're getting used to it. They may not be doing them very well. So now they're looking at, well, how do I do this well? I think the next thing is I think some people, what we're hearing and me personally, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, a lot of times you're optimistic um, when you're running companies and you're like, oh, well, this will pass and it'll pass faster. And the data is showing us that it's stretching out. The schools are staying closed longer. The um, government is suggest, you know, is saying, hey, we're now adding weeks to your shelter in place. And so... I think people are recognizing this won't be over as quickly as we had all hoped. And so now you say, well, what do I do about that? I could put a Band-Aid on, yeah. but I don't know that the Band-Aid is what the, I think I might need to make a systemic change um, in productivity and using these tools and not just using them, but I got to use them well. Um, yeah. So our clients, you know, they've been very fortunate. They, you know, they know how to use Zoom. They know how to use, they've been on, you know, because Rhythm has provided them a rhythm of work. They have virtual dashboards. They have everything in place. Our clients have been running their companies with discipline, so they haven't had to set all of that up. What they've been doing is really doing deep thinking on, like I said, what do I have to do to manage my cash, gathering data on their customers to kind of get an indication to put into their models, uh, making sure employee productivity is up, looking at workflows and changing them, and then reimagining the future. And as you get more and more data, you make more and more decisions. So companies now, I think, are in the, okay, I've got to execute on my business continuity plans or other plans that I've been thinking about. So our clients may be a little bit ahead of others because they're not dealing with this rhythm of work and trying to get up to, you know, trying to get up to speed. It's a really good point. I mean, I'd love to hear more about the contingency planning and continuity. Uh, I know Rhythm has done some work mm -hmm. pretty quickly to be able to help companies plan in this environment. So can you share a little bit more about what you guys have been doing there and how you've yeah. been helping? Yeah. So um, one of the things that we recommended and our clients loved it and was really appreciative of um, you know, as I said, they all have their dashboard. So they have their 90 day plans and it's listed out at the company level. And that's what they use to run their weekly meetings. Departments have them, you know, specific to the departments and individuals have them. And so as they're navigating, the first thing that, that we had them do is we knew that there was an adjustment that had to be made due to, you know, COVID-19 or coronavirus, or we call it business continuity. And so what we did is they had their listed priorities, one, two, three, four, five, for the company or the department. So we created priority zero. So priority zero became the business continuity plan, or it became the adjustments for whatever you wanted to call it, COVID. And underneath that, we created a template for them with four areas. One was for cash. Two was for customers. Three, um, you know, for uh, employees. And then four, help me out here, Clay. What did I tell you was on our, I, I know it's on our dashboards, but uh, for sales. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. How could we forget? How could we forget sales? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so those are the four things that are on there. And those are the elements that are making up their survive and recover strategy. Um, so that's where they're putting those short term, you know, the short term movements. Um, and then the rest of their plan that they had in, they're making adjustments. Like I said, they're either Xing it out 
or mm-hmm. they're changing, uh, they're changing their focus. And, um, that really, a lot of it is about modeling right now. I have to make these moves because I need to model my cash position so that I know how much money I have to run this business in the short term, how long is this going to last, et cetera. So that's really what the COVID model is about to get those data points and think deeply about taking care of, you know, four important things in your company. So that, that's been extraordinarily helpful and setting that as a separate priority and then everything else, seeing what you want to keep or not keep. We hadn't seen that until you, uh, we spoke earlier in the week and that's very powerful. We're going to start using it. And I, you know, I, we were fortunate in that, you know, me and my co-founder, we, we kind of saw what was happening and we put together a very quick contingency plan, yeah. right? Just literally like one morning, you know, 30 minutes, like, okay, here's what we, we need mm-hmm. to do. I love the idea of having something with more structure that looks across the different areas because our contingency plan looked like, okay, well, what happens if this scenario goes down <laughs> or if we see this happen, what do we do? If we see this happen, what do we do? And I love the, the way you framed it. It's much more holistic about the business operations without getting bogged down into the weeds, but really thinking about what's the lifeblood of right. the business, right? Cash, is definitely lifeblood, customers, lifeblood, employees, and sales, right? And so you you get out of this, I think people, it's easy to get into panic mode, right? Of like, well, okay, like our, what we were doing is scenario-based contingency planning. <laughs> like, you know, if a meteor comes and hits one of us, like what happens then? You know, it's like, no, like you don't need to go to that level. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I d- definitely, if you're able to share the uh, that model, we want to, we'd love to, I'd love to share that out with our, our listeners, of course. Our audience. Of course. of course, I'll send that to you and you can send it to anybody on the, on the podcast or anybody. We're happy to share and I do webinars on it and you can forward that. Um, you know, it's our gift. Yeah. Thank you. Very yeah, well, much. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. So that, that, that's, that's where our, our companies, I think that's where their heads are right now. Um, that's what they're focused on. A lot of the leaders, um, it's one of the hardest things ever, you know, having run four companies, mm. these, these are your people and their lives are your lives. Their families' lives are your lives. Their dreams are your dreams. And to think that you might have to impact them, you just, I don't know, it makes me completely nauseous and, um, you don't want to do it. And yet, for a lot of us, we need to look at the models and figure out if we have to do it because we can't let everyone on the team die. And um, uh, it's, it's one of the hardest things. And, and I think that what we have found, you know, with our leaders who are generally so sad, they're really sad, is to help them as much as we can to look at things in an analytical way And when we give them tools and certain things that they need to do, they're able, once they move into that, they sort of get unstuck from being paralyzed and hopeful in the situation um, and saying, you know what, I'm going to need to address this. And so if I have to do it, I'm going to do the absolute best that I can for everybody involved. And that's what I think has been really helpful. It's very powerful. I mean... I'm just, you know, after working, starting to work with rhythm, I just don't understand why most companies don't have rhythm <laughs> because it's so, performance is so important. People, you know, and I've been at larger companies, you know, mid-sized, other mid-sized companies. And there's always this conversation about mm-hmm. performance. But then it's like, well, how do you track it? Oh, it's in a spreadsheet. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, like that's, uh, how do you keep alignment between a strategy and the day-to-day? And I think that's what we've seen that Rhythm is giving us uh, is that ability to say, what's important today? Mm-hmm. It is what I'm doing today connected to needle moving activities mm-hmm. around the, the bigger mm-hmm. mission and the BHAG 
right, which is really critical. And I'm mm -hmm. curious, I mean, one of the, the areas I, I'm, almost, I'm always fascinated by uh, is, is this area of high performance, right? Like mm -hmm. building a high performance team, mm -hmm. helping people achieve levels of high performance. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious from your perspective, what, what is, how does high performance fit into what's happening right now? Because it feels a little bit weird to talk to people about performing at a high level with everything that's going on, but out, you also realize like, well, you, you, you want to the team and you to really rise up to this current mm -hmm. situation. And that does require a high level of performance. So how have you found teams talking about that or leaders still having a conversation around high performance while we're going through this? I think I've heard the word productivity more than high performance. Um, and, I, and I think maybe in the short term, um, they're just trying to get to the throughput levels that they got to before people went remote. Um, I think that it's the same, it, it's really the same fundamentals. The fundamentals that we've provided all of our clients have really proved to be helpful to them. So there's really two things. Um, I, most of these companies, whether they're, you know, they're scaling, they're operating really well, they do have a rhythm of work yeah, yeah. because, you know, as you get more complex and decisions get more complex, um, there are times when you need to stop, review and adjust. And you have to be very, very disciplined about what conversation you're having when, when you're stop reviewing and adjusting. Otherwise, when you have lots of communication and lots of data and you've grown, it's hard to self-organize to make good decisions and it's chaotic. So the first thing that our clients have always done, and, and, and you know, I have a white paper on this, it's called the rhythm of work. Yes. And so on a regular basis, you know, they do planning, strategic planning, and they think about three to five years out what they're going to do. And they do that pretty much every year. They once a year will do annual planning and they'll figure out what to do. They'll break that down into quarterly 90-day plans, both for the company level and then for all of their departments. And then a lot of places where, where they miss is the work is done predominantly weekly and daily. Yeah. And they miss on this very, very badly. So we take the quarterly dashboards for the departments and the individuals, combine them, and that visual dashboard is what runs their weekly meetings. Literally, their agenda pops up and they are able to see on the visual dashboards prior to the meetings, people will take their individual dashboards, the couple things they have, and they have success criteria for what they're doing. And if they're doing well, they put green and they put the metric associated with it, or they put red, I'm stuck, and this is why they have a notation, a comment to have a conversation. This is why, and this is what I need to get unstuck. Or super green, they found something spectacular, it's really working. And they're sharing that innovation. So you talk about innovation, making sure you stop review and adjust for innovation is extremely important in the company. You don't want to skip that. I mean, if you, you're going to rely on new ideas. Sometimes it comes from within, right? So um, I think that, that having that discipline of using visual weekly dashboards that are connected up, down, left, and right so that you could see the whole picture of any priorities you're working on and being able to make those weekly meetings 80% problem solving mm -hmm. versus 80% status has been huge yeah, for our companies. Huge. That's really good. And I, you know, I, it's interesting just hearing you walk through this because I think it's reminded me of the reasons we are really finding so much value and benefit out of Rhythm is, mm -hmm. is like, you know, our weekly meetings were more like, uh, status reports, Yeah. you know, like, okay, well, yeah, the red, yellow, green is looking back at, well, what went wrong yeah. <laughs> last week, as opposed to we're finding that we're using the platform weekly as a part of a line. Right. Right? So it really becomes a way for the, the leadership team to align on, okay, how are we progressing, right? What are things that need to be addressed? How do we move uh, blocks out of our way, right? And it feels so much better because I think in the, the mode of statusing, 
is almost like you're static. You're, you're static. You're at a static. snapshot in time. Mm -hmm. Whereas when we're doing alignment, there's actually a, a feeling of movement towards the outcomes, right? Right. Which is really interesting. And I think I think as I, as you were walking through the rhythm, it actually made me think about something I hadn't thought about before uh, is having that type of rhythm creates a, a little bit of a, a sense of certainty and control, right? And in the environment that we're in, right, if you don't have that rhythm, you know, you're kind of like, okay, I just need to respond to whatever's in front of me. But I can see, you know, when I've, I'm talking to customers or employees or prospects, uh, there's a, I can feel a sense of not certainty, but a sense of, I know where our compass is pointing That's right. and where we're trying to go. So I can have a more uh, confident conversation. Mm hmm in terms of what we're trying to do, but it's that, you know, I think I was reading in a book recently, you know, one of the, the most basic human desires is to feel a sense of control over your own life or your situation, right? And I'm sure there are a lot of people today that, you know, whether it's a business leader or employee or, you know, like they they're feel like they're losing that sense of control. And it just sounds like, you know, what you laid out it's so important to find that rhythm or cadence, regardless of your role, right? Whether that's even as a family, mm -hmm. right? It's like, what, what is our cadence? You know, I think there's so much we could talk about here. I think we could talk for uh, mm -hmm. a couple more hours and we, we definitely will have to have you back because this is, this is the type of conversation that's so critical that our, our listeners need to hear and, and be a part of because it this is a great I mean it sounds horrible some people may say it sounds horrible this is a great opportunity that is mm -hmm. in front of us is to kind of imagine what what is it you really want to build mm -hmm. right? what do you really want to do and now beginning to step into that right it's going to be tough no doubt but mm -hmm. you know you you got to at some level start to move in the direction that touches your heart right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and so i think that that's really critical so just to close out any last thoughts or recommendations or advice for our listeners yeah so you know i i i would definitely recommend um as i said really think deeply as you're making decisions right now um, not only think for today and think of the inputs that you know, or best guess, um, but think about the future. The in-between is what's unknown. It's very, very hard to think about that in-between. Um, fight for the next 30 days. Keep your team focused. We're talking to, you know, I talked to our team today. And while our executive team, we're very, very focused on survive and recover and thrive and, uh, we're looking at all scenarios. You know, I've got, you know, other team members in departments on a 30 day sprint. This yeah. is what we're doing. This is what you need to do so that we can gather this data so that we get another piece of data in 30 days or 20 days to know what we're going to do in the next 30 days. So the environment's changing around us. And so that's what we're doing. Um, exec teams looking at all things and we're having people just stay focused on the 30 days. Get your rhythm of work. It will really help. Um, like I said, for our clients, fortunately, they did not. They had that discipline in place. So that allowed them to really start thinking and working faster in an you know, uncertain environment. Um, and then the last thing I would say is while you have your rhythm of work, I think that if you want to build a high-performance team, as you were talking about, or a productive team, um, you have to make a cultural shift to what they need and to communicate in that way. And what we have found, um, we have a framework called the five C's of high performance teams. And there are five things that you as leaders or you as an individual want to make sure that you know. Yeah. And one, you want to make sure common purpose. Mm -hmm. Why does it matter to me? 
So as you're going out right now and you as a leader and an executive team realize you're trying to help the business survive, if you go down and you tell another employee, they're trying to help their family survive. So really, really be cognizant of what they're thinking about and speak to them in their terms. Um, the things that are relevant to you as leaders or that you may be able to do aren't as relevant to them. Second, make sure that you have um, clarity. You want to be very, very clear on your expectations. Just like I said, for all of our clients, for everything they do, they have success metrics. This is how you succeed, right? So they'll make sure that things are, you know, are, are, are green or yellow or red. And the reason why the weekly meetings do feel so much more energetic is you're not necessarily reporting on the past. You're projecting whether you're going to hit the red, yellow, or green. Right. So you are forward facing company based on historical data and what we believe we're going to do in the future, you're always forward facing. So make sure that you have clear expectations and do not assume if you tell them what it is that they've heard that, make them repeat it okay. back. Oh, that's really good. Okay. And then, like I said, make sure you have your rhythm of work. Make sure that you're asking people, how can I help you? Yeah. Every week, every day, if you're a manager, you better be talking to your team or, or assigning to somebody you know, else that can help. What can I do to help you today? Um, because that gives you the feedback of what you need to manage. It's your job to help them be the best they can be. And then lastly, I think it's extremely important. People are very, very, very focused on consequences right now. And they're thinking about negative consequences. So think highly about what are some short-term things that you're winning at. If you have a 30-day sprint and you want to achieve something today or you want to achieve something in a week and you have, celebrate like crazy mm -hmm. to offset. And then if there is negative news, let people know. Let people know up front what it is. Let people know what's going to happen. Let people know the consequences as best as you can um, because people will make up stories otherwise. Yeah. They will fight for success if their leaders are showing them the battle plan. If they don't know the battle plan, it's hard for them to give their all or get behind you. So that would be my recommendation. And um, we are working very hard with all our clients on their rhythm of work, their business continuity plans, their future, and making sure their communication is as rock solid as it could be. So two questions to wrap up. First question is, uh, we ask all of our, our guests, uh, if you could have one superpower what would that superpower be? If we gave you a magic wand and we could wave it and give you one superpower, what would you want as a superpower? Multiplication. Multiple, like? I, the ability to have multiplication. Okay. So whether, you know, I'm big on acts of kindness every day, if I could wave a magic wand and make that multiply by a million or a trillion, I would love it. Ah, okay, yeah, I love it. Uh, multiply by exponentially, mm -hmm. uh, love well-being. I, I love it. And then, or even in my company, if I could what? multiply our ability to amplify our message, yeah. uh, you know, we've always we have great clients, we have great retention, we have great business, but um, it's not it's not a category yet. Nobody wakes up and says, "Oh my goodness, I need strategy execution software." <laughs> execution software. You, you got to be kidding before me! Salesforce right? before Salesforce. <laughs> Uh, so that amplification would do well there too. I love it. So it's uh, wave the magic wand and create the new market that you dominate. I that's love right. it. <laughs> I, that's really good. Second question is where can our audience find you? Like what are your uh, socials, email? What's the best way to reach you? Yeah. So um, feel free uh, to reach me. Um, you can find out there's lots of blogs, lots of information at www.rhythmsystems.com. That's R-H-Y-T-H-M-S-Y-S-T-E-M-S.com. I'm on LinkedIn. I would be delighted to have you LinkedIn with me. Ask me a question. Tell me if you learned anything. Maybe you have something to share that I could share. With other people, I do speak a lot, and um, I think sharing great ideas is wonderful. Uh, Cindy Prager, P is Penny, R A E G E R, um, and we would love 
love to hear from you. If you need anything, feel free to ask me. It is a delight uh, to be able to help anyone and specifically for, you know, Clay's community. Um, absolutely. Well, just, I, this has been an amazing podcast. I'll be very transparent with you. I don't think I knew what I was getting myself into uh, in terms of when we, when we first started talking about this. I think this, just the timing, you know, the information you share, just the insights, I think just invaluable, both, you know, to me, to our audience, and we definitely will be having you back. So thank you for the, for the time and the great insight, Cindy. Thank you for asking. All right. Thank you. Thank you.